myself to relate with him and how that's really supported me a lot to deal with some of the uh, kind of inherent programmed stuff that comes along with being a mom, which is the uh, bitchiness, like the, the, the bitch program. And you know, we all know what that is because you see it on in movies and in TV shows and it's like a it's like a running joke that um, a mom is going to be someone who nags, who complains, who um, is constantly like on your ass, like it is a bitch, right? That's the word for it. Um, so that is going to come up for anyone who becomes a mom. It's, it's, it's something that even if your mom was like the sweetest, most perfect mother and never, ever acted like a bitch. Well, you also saw on TV and movies, all of the stuff of it being the norm for a mother to have these characteristics for this to be part of her character. So it might come up for you and probably will come up for you even if you weren't necessarily exposed to that in your home necessarily. And so that's an important thing to consider when you're becoming a parent because things will come up. Like you'll have some flash of an idea and I'll I'll give an example of this because I have a really great story um, because Max and I were walking through a really cool point today. But um, you'll have a, a... an image flash through your mind or a thought flash through your mind um, of that, that you're like, where is it coming from? What is it? Where is that from of something that you want to, that you're going to do to your kid or say to your kid or, or imagining something with your kid. And you just, it, it, it's like, it's not coming from you. It's, it seems like it's coming from outside of you, but it's within you. Right? So, before I get into this story, though, I wanted to share something because I know that, that people will watch this video who aren't necessarily parents. Um, and so I wanted to share some perspective on why your mom was a bitch. <laughs> because it's really important, especially before you have children, to start looking at your um, your relationship to your childhood and the people within your childhood because a lot of the experiences that happen to you within your childhood develop who you become as an adult and your um your issues your anxiety your depression your alcoholism your drug addictions your um nervousness your inability to have a good relationship your inability to have friendships your um you know addictions to eating your um weight gain uh your problems with self-discipline and the list could go on like your addiction to porn your addiction to watching netflix like all that stuff can stem from how you're not really properly supported to deal with your own emotions and to support yourself to um, develop some self self discipline so that you can use your time effectively and you can really direct your own will and so that you actually have freedom of choice and I can say probably or I can definitely say and I'm sure you can really fundamentally look for yourself we we tend to talk about having freedom of choice, but if you're challenged with doing something that you really, within yourself, have supported yourself over such a long period of time to tell yourself you don't really want to do it. Like, I don't really want to go exercise. Like, I don't really want to, you know, eat a salad. I'd rather eat a big greasy hamburger with french fries. And it's not that that is a problem within itself, but it's like if you're doing that every night because you really, really want it, we're not really supported throughout our childhood to have looked at our what will actually support us to be effective human beings. So, some perspective because 
as you're walking through and really looking at like how, why you are the way you are today and how to support yourself to change to become a person that you actually want to be. Um, one of the important things you can do is go back and look at your childhood experiences and deal with any of the residual anger and frustration that you might have towards your parents, especially and other people that might have been a part of your childhood, like your grandparents and other family members and stuff like that. But primarily for most people, it's going to be their parents. And, um, generally it's the mom who is a bit more involved and so I want to give some perspective on the bitchy mother program. And so if you had, if you could see, even if mo- if, if your mom was, if, if you could see these moments in your memories of your mom being a bitch, this will support you. So why was your mom a bitch? Well, if you, if you really, and this is just a point to relate to and also to support mothers now and mothers who are going to, or people who are going, women who are going to become mothers, um, to start to flag these points, to, to become aware of them popping up. Because if you're more aware of your programming, it's easier for you to support yourself to rewrite some of the things, the behaviors, the actions, not to go into action when it's something that could be detrimental to yourself and your kids, and to instead support yourself to breathe and do self-forgiveness and support yourself to let that thing that would have just been an automatic action, like a, like literally a program running on a computer, to uh, create that into something where you're here breathing, you're just with your kid, and you're supporting yourself to let whatever that automated point go. And I'll give some examples in a moment. Um, but so why was your mom a bitch? <laughs> because from the moment you're born, we're all programmed, or when I say programmed, we're all impulsed with this idea that um, your baby could die at any moment. Like when, for new moms, and I'm sure if you're a new mom, you'll know this, like your impulse with the idea of like SIDS is a big danger, sudden infant death syndrome. And like, you got to get them to the doctor on time. And even the whole birthing process thing is supposed to be this crazy, like super painful, stressful event. And when you bring them home, you don't know what you're doing. And there's all this stuff that literally creates a traumatic experience within the mother. Like you will go through a certain level of trauma just from all of that plus all the hormonal stuff that's going on within your body, plus your physical body is changing a lot during that time. And I know a lot of you may not want to hear this, but it's like the reality of it is a woman's physical body shifts so much during that time that it's another point of trauma. So from the very beginning of when a child is conceived and when they're, when you're going through pregnancy and you're going through that initial, the birth and then like, the initial first year is very traumatic for a, the woman. And you may not experience it as trauma like you would imagine getting in a car crash or something like that, but it is little points of trauma over and over and over again. So it's the, the whole pregnancy, all the physical changes, the hormonal changes, the birth, the fear of like your baby dying during pregnancy, the fear of them dying in their bed in the night, the fear of having to take them to the doctor, the fear of them getting a cold, um, the fear of like letting anyone else hold them. And then the kids like constantly crying. Um, and you may have like lots of issues. Like you may have the, even the perfect, most perfect baby situation where your baby's like super chill and, uh, just hanging out. Even even then, the woman will go through some trauma. But for most women, your child cries a lot. You're stressed about what it is, what's going wrong. Just even the crying within itself is like a traumatic sound. So all of that, the first year, is like this massive amount of like craziness and trauma that a woman goes through. And it's sort of, we're not supported to deal with that effectively. We're not supported to be aware that that all the little things that are going on are pretty normal. Um, 
and there's a lot of fear and then a lot of like physical hormonal stuff that's going on during that time and that doesn't settle down until around a year. Um, so yeah, that kind of puts the woman in an emergency state of mind when it comes to her children. And a lot of times that carries through because in year two and in year three, there's other things that come up like, like behavior issues and basically you're constantly having to clean because kids are kind of like not aware of the, the consequences of like pulling all their toys out and pulling all the books off the shelf and, you know, smearing all their food around. They're not aware of you and what you're having to do. So all of that starts to accumulate to the point where a, a woman is like constantly managing um, managing her children in the sense of, and, and kind of in a bad management way, like a trauma, like a manager that's been severely traumatized. Like you're constantly worried that something bad's going to happen. And so you're trying to prevent it, but you're doing it in a way where like, you're not, you're not enjoying yourself. Like you're having a hard time. Like you're, you, you've been through trauma. So you're snapping at, at your kids and you're frustrated and you're just trying to make it so that you're not having to clean the house for two hours after they go to bed. Like, and that's the reality. And look, another thing that's important to consider here is that I'm just checking the monitor, um, is that you will see so many, if, if you're a mom, I'm sure you've delved into the whole arena of, um, like Instagram and all the Instagram pictures and out of an ideal family and all that stuff like all these these women who who share this like perfect Instagram feed uh where everything everything is edited and perfect. So the reality is every single woman is going through this stuff who is you know having kids, who has had kids. There's some level of this that she's going through. So nobody is perfect. Everyone is dealing with um, having this internal stuff go on when you're around your kids and you may be able to suppress it. Um, but it's there. And so even for you, if, if you don't have kids for your mother, if she just suppressed it, then it may come out in you or it may come out in the partner that you choose, the, the wife that you choose to have kids with. And then your response to that will be, will be may come out so just be aware of that is that this exists everywhere you can't escape this it's it's a part of our social norm right so so what you can do if you're if you are a mom I'll talk more about that but if you're not a mom and you're just looking at this when it comes to your own mother you can start supporting yourself with self-forgiveness from the perspective of your mother. Like, like I forgive myself for accepting and allowing myself to let the trauma of pregnancy and birth to carry through to my interactions with my child throughout their life. I forgive myself for accepting and allowing myself to constantly be in a state of emergency and constantly be managing my children rather than communicating and, and supporting directly and using my words to express what I need them to understand or what I want them to understand. Just checking something real quick. Okay, so I forgive myself for accepting and allowing myself to not have the patience to explain to them effectively and to instead develop a energetic response to them acting in a way that I am perceiving in my mind is going to create more work for me or is going to create a dangerous situation. So those are just some examples, but um, self-forgiveness is so powerful, man. So I'll, I'll share a story today. So anyway, so, but the other thing I wanted to, to say really quickly is that you can do self-forgiveness as your mom and start to look at things that pop up or as a mother. It doesn't have to be your mother, a mother, because even the men and the sons of our society are being programmed with the idea that a mom is a bitch through all the stuff they see on TV 
and in movies and yeah and just kind of like in the normal interact if you've ever gone to a playground in the middle of the day when all the older kids are at school like you will see absolutely the mother is a bitch program <laughs> running like it is there so if you didn't get it from your mom you got it from tv you got it from movies you got it from going over to your friends houses and seeing their mothers interact with them it's pervasive it's everywhere right so you can start support, supporting yourself even if you're a a guy to start removing this program because this stuff can come up for you when you become a dad is you can still participate in the bitch program when you're a dad so um it just tends to be moms because you're going through this trauma right that's it men go through trauma too but the the woman it's it's a bit more uh we're managers it's it's more natural to us um to kind of manage the kids and be very serious about the whole thing so um it's something that's a little bit more pervasive among women it's definitely there for most women um okay so that's a cool thing of like why your mom was a bitch. Like it's, it's just a, a, a um, unsupported response and reaction to the trauma of having a baby and all the fear and all that stuff that comes up naturally because our society does not support young women to understand pregnancy, to understand having a baby and all of that stuff. So, um, something really cool came up today, uh, that I wanted to give an example of, of like the bitchy program coming up and how to deal with it and also how to support yourself to relate to your own kids so that you're not just turning into a bitch, right? To start to rewrite that program because it comes up so automatically and so instant that if you don't direct this point within yourself, it will just run and then you'll find yourself doing something to your kid where it's like, oh shit, I feel really bad about that or I feel really guilty. And so this is something that I could see for me, like I could definitely see this stuff, you know, getting much worse if I hadn't supported myself to stop. And if I'm not supporting myself to stop in those moments when something comes up, a response within me comes up. So I'll give an example. Um, so Max today, uh, and again, it's going to be like the other story. It's going to be this really seemingly like, why are you getting frustrated about this? But you never know what you're going to get frustrated about because it's an automatic point that that's within you of just becoming a bitch. Right. Um, so I had, I had set up, kind of set up our backyard to be a little bit better for the nighttime to kind of be, so we could still play outside when it starts to get dark, because it gets dark so early here. Um, like at 5.30 is when sunset is, I think, 5.30. And so the kids are not ready to go to bed yet, and they spend so much time outside that they really like being outside when it's late. So we've got some lights, and I put these really cool, like, solar lights in the ground, and... They're really cool, but they're a bit more delicate than I realized Um, because they seemed sturdy, but they're a bit more delicate than I realized. And it's a cool point to consider. Like, you're not going to get to have really nice things when you're a parent um, of little kids unless you're going to be constantly managing them not breaking stuff. So this is just something to consider. A little side note point. Um, But anyways... I had set up these lights, you know, in our backyard and it looked really cool. And and Max really liked it. Like he really enjoys them out there and thought it looked really nice. But recently, the past couple days, he's been taking his car like this, this, or, or like some, something that, that he can use as a car and driving it into the lights and like smashing them like running it into them and running it over and over again. And so I've been working on explaining, I had been working on trying to explain to him that, you know, these are, we've set these up, they're specifically here and they will break if he does this. And we actually did break one of them. 
um, like the little latch came off of it, like something inside of it broke, but it was still working. So for him, it's like, oh, but it's fixed now, right? Um, so that was for the past few days we've been doing that. And uh, tonight he was doing it again, even after we've talked to it about it multiple times. Um, and I felt this point within me of like, frustration boiling up it's like it's sort of like your blood boiling kind of feeling right and I don't know if you've ever felt that but that's definitely again a stereotypical bitchy mom like oh, you know um I've, I've literally seen that face in a movie somewhere like that ah oh, you know um from a mom and I felt that coming up and I'm like okay what is this and Again, this this uh, tool that I've been using of taking a deep breath in those moments because it, when it comes up, like it's so quick. If I don't catch it quickly, it's like I can see how it could become something where I get really, really frustrated and angry and like run over to him and like, you know, why are you doing that? I'm getting really angry. So I'm like taking a deep breath and looking at why is he why is this point so important for him to hit these lights? Because Max is usually pretty cool um, and we're really good at communicating with each other at this point, um, especially because, and of course I'm always gonna bring this up, his vocabulary is so high that we can communicate really easily and I can use lots of different ways of explaining something. And as much as I, attempted with this to explain to him why I would I don't want him to break these lamps he's still going for it and and breaking them and smashing them and uh or like running into them with this truck thing and I'm like okay he's running into them with this truck thing what is going on here and I realized we just saw like I don't know if it was a week ago a little, over a week ago maybe two weeks ago I don't remember how long ago it was, but we saw a car accident in front of our house and this lady uh, was driving a truck and went around the curve. Like our house has a curve. There's schools down the street and there's a curve and then our house is right there and then there's a street, right? So it's not a cul-de-sac. It's like this corner and this car came like pretty fast around the corner and then smashed right into this light pole in our neighbor's yard and next door neighbor's yard. And Max and I were happened to be sitting on a picnic blanket in the front yard when this happened, um, because Cindy was asleep in the car and we saw it happen right in front of us. And, and I realized I had, cause I, I, I realized what was going on. Like he's taking a car and smashing into these, into these lights because we spent a lot of time talking about the lady running into the light pole and because she ended up driving off and uh, the cops came to the house and like talked to us a bit because we saw everything happen um and then we talked and we saw the light pole get fixed recently so it was like a whole thing where we saw everything happen and but for, for some reason within me i did not realize that that situation with the lights was related to this light pole Thing. It seems so obvious now, but when you're, it, another thing to remember is like, when you're, when you have a personal preference to something, you can be blinded to see like what's going on with your kid. So I liked those lights. I thought they looked nice. Um, I spent the money on them. I picked them out. You know, I wanted them to look good in the yard and I, and I thought that it would be a cool, fun thing for us to do, but um, for Max, it, for him, for his, from his perspective, it's just like that lady, she smashed it with her car and then the, the guys came to fix it. And that's what he was playing. If I was to really clearly look at what he was doing, he's playing that as a game. Like, okay, the car is smashing, 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 the light pole falls over and then, um, it gets fixed. Uh, and then you'll go back and fix it. So even if he can't fix it, then he'll bring it over to me and figure out like why mom, why is it not working? Um, so it didn't matter really a lot. My trying to explain it to him was not that, that caring about what I thought my personal preference about that light being there 
what was more important for him in that within himself, right, was reenacting that light pole fixture getting knocked over. And here was a cool way for him to do it. Here's these little light that look like little street lamps in the ground that he can smash over with his car. So I just had this moment where I just totally realized you know, and remembered what it was like being a kid. And I have a lot of these come up throughout the day, but it was like a really good one. This was a really good one because I was like, you know, I I don't remember doing that exactly, that exact scenario, but I, re- I can totally relate to what it's like as a kid to break a rule because you're playing a game and you're having fun and having your mom or teacher or whoever come and get angry at you because that because of that and you don't understand why they're angry because you were just playing a game and then you remember that oh yeah they told me um not to do this but you overrided it within yourself and so you know there's like guilt involved and you know you're supposed to apologize and you're supposed to do all these things um in order to stop the adult from being angry. And it was really cool because um, I'm having this realization, but that in itself, having that awareness is not enough. That's not going to stop the, this, this like energetic point that goes on within you when your kid's smashing something nice that you have. Um, Because it's, you're still going to have that reaction. So it was really cool because I started, I, well, I came in first and started working on a word list for myself of like all the things that I could see that came up within that, within that, uh, experience. Like what was still kind of remnant stuff there, like the word rage or the word angry or the word break, um, a bunch of different things. I won't go into all the details, but like, um, so supporting myself with all of that, And all the vocabulary that came up in relation to this, this, uh, point that's coming through, right? It's not that much work. It's just, you just like mapping out what's already going on in your head. You're just putting it on, you know, writing it out and then doing self-forgiveness out loud. I love doing this with Max because he, firstly, he's like watching me do my word list, which is really cool. So it's like a really calming point for me to just sit down and work on it. Um, and to kind of like dissipate some of this frustration and anger that goes on. Um, and if this sounds like I'm overanalyzing, cause I always hear people say stuff like that, where it's like, oh, you're overanalyzing your parenting. It's like, well, I, I know that this has worked for me when I've been in a, uh, disagreement with Cameron, for example, my husband and it's made our relationship super strong and super effective to the point where we don't argue. Like, and I know you always hear the, that cliche of like, well, if you don't argue, you're in a, you know, it's a terrible relationship. That's not the case. Like we are in sync, like in line, like we don't participate in petty bullshit with each other. And this process that I'm doing now with my whole parenting point is exactly what I did with him in our relationship and it's what's got us to the point where we are super strong uh, within that. So it's like, I know this works, you know, I've seen the results and I've created for myself a very um, blissful marriage because of that. So now I'm going to do that with my parenting. And so, but I know that it's going to be a process because I know things are going to come up that I wasn't expecting things that, that again, it's like you, you weren't aware of yourself being programmed with all this stuff when you were a kid, like you weren't aware of what you were exposed to and what just will come up as an automate automatic behavior later on. So, so with Max, okay. All right. So then I all do self forgiveness with him out loud, um, which I gave you some examples of earlier and it's really cool because Max listens and he will start to say things like I was allowing myself to hit that pole. So he's playing with the, the, what the expression that I'm using and, and I'll, I'll straight up say things like, I forgive myself for accepting and allowing myself to participate in frustration towards you or towards Seneca 
for breaking something that I perceive is mine, that I've, that I've identified as belonging to me and that I've put some importance and, and some significance onto over communicating with you. So I, I forgive myself for accepting and allowing myself to try to control your, or to de desire, yeah, desire to physically control you, um, to stop you from acting a certain way. Because I mean, again, this is how you stop spanking. Like this is how you stop just physically grabbing your kids is to work on these points and support yourself to not just make that your automatic instant reaction. Because when you take that stuff off the table and you let it go and you breathe and you support yourself to actually communicate with your kid, like, isn't that what you would have wanted as a kid? Like the whole spanking thing is so ridiculous because it's like, you know what it was. If you were to really sit down and breathe and relate to what it was like actually as a kid and you hadn't totally forgotten what it was like to be a kid, you knew how terrifying it was to get spanked. And yet... The same people who, who were completely and totally terrified to get spanked when they were kids will do it to their own kids because you forget what it's like and you go through all this trauma as a, as a mother and as a dad having to deal with all the stuff going on and the, all the changes that he goes through um, and you totally forget what it was like to be a kid and you will just act out the same things that your parents did to you or the same things that you've seen on TV You'll act it onto your kid and then you'll feel guilty about it, but you won't do anything to change it because you don't know how, because all this stuff was programmed in you when you were a kid. If you were spanked as a kid, the likelihood that you're going to spank your kids is very high because it's, it's not something that you're choosing to do. You don't have freedom of choice within it. You are acting out something that was done to you because you're dealing with all this, uh, residual anger and like all this, all this stuff, right? So let's be honest about it. Let's just be honest with each other that that stuff is there. It's within all of us. And if there were ways that you could deal with it and let it go so that you don't have to be the constant bitch in your kid's life to the point where they're afraid of you or they're running away from you or, you know, they're constantly worried you're going to be yelling at them or they, they start acting defiantly because, because they're trying to provoke you. Because the energetic anger is all they know from you. And that's that symbol of love to them that they've been programmed with over the time that you've been with them. You don't want that to be your interaction with your kid. Um, and we've got to stop the cycle of just, if we think the, the whole idea that you can just do exactly what your parents did to you, to your own kids and you'll, they'll be fine. It's just so delusional because it's like, are you actually fine? Like, do you have... Do you have the, all the abilities that you would have liked to have had as an adult? Like, are you dealing with anxiety and depression and you don't wonder where that stuff stems from? Are you unable to like get out the door and start doing the things that you need to do to like make money and be successful and, you know, have a good life with your kids and your wife and have a good relationship uh, even if you don't want to get married and have kids, like you still want to have good relationships. And if you're unable to do that, don't you wonder why? Like, you don't think that has anything to do with your childhood, you know? So this is why parenting is so crucial. Even if you're not a parent, um, supporting other parents to understand these things is because, like, that is the seed of all of us. It's the seed of where all of our inabilities to be effective human beings stems from. It's the beginning and that is what we've got to change if we actually want to support kids to be able to not have to deal with all this, all this depression, anxiety stuff. And to instead, just when they, as they get older, be able to really do something in this world because there's so many opportunities here, but it all stems from this really simple point. Um, and that's why as a parent, that's another reason why as a parent, I am spending as much time with my kids as possible. I'm, I'm with them as much as possible because little things like, for example, that light fixture getting knocked over. If I had missed that, would I have understood why he was knocking over these lamps in the yard? And would I have had the same response? Like, would I have just yelled at him 
because I'm like, why can't he just understand that it's not acceptable for him to knock those over? And so having spent as much time as I can with him and being able to relate and being able to understand, okay, he's reenacting something that we've seen. So something out there was very exciting when he, when that lamp pole was hit in front of us. And so playing that out is something that he's doing to deal with that also. And it's not about letting him do it. Cause we, I, I, we, I made the decision that I don't want those things broken. So I'm going to find a way where he can play, hit the lamp pole down without those things being broken and and support him with that so it's not about just giving in to your kid and letting them do whatever but it is about figuring out how to support them and how to really relate to them especially when they're really young because the more that you do that as a mother really when they're really young the more they can learn to trust you because your ability to and your ability to be calm and stable around them is something that they can learn to trust and when your kid trusts you i mean when how do you feel when you have someone you can really trust? Don't you feel like you can you can really build yourself and do something? Like you can really really expand yourself because you have someone else at home maybe, maybe your husband or wife or friend or something like that who you can communicate with who's not going to suddenly lash out at you or suddenly start acting weird. Um, and that's what a child has in a mother or father even, but moms tend to just be more involved, right? That's just a natural part of us, our, our DNA, our biological structure, right? Um, but, but having that trust and that ability to rely on somebody is so crucial as, as a kid. And the more we have that in, this, in more families, the more stable the next generation of children is going to be. And that's so obvious. It's just common sense. So yeah, anyways, I just wanted to share that story because it was just a really cool, obvious example for me of even more within myself, perfecting my ability to relate to my kid, my kids, both of them, and to just get better and better as a mom, because it's not about being a perfect mom today. It's not about being a perfect parent today. It's about supporting yourself to become aware of the, the points where you're not perfect. And instead of feeling the guilt and then like drinking wine to make yourself feel better or, um, or just suppressing that stuff, to take the time to support yourself to change it. Because that's what you'd really like is to be calm and stable and really be able to support yourself to understand your kids So that if they were doing something that was harmful to them or, you know, breaking stuff that that you don't want to be broken, like that you could actually support them to understand why it wasn't best for them to not be, you know, why it's best for them to not do that. So the only way that you're going to do that is to first clear up the points within yourself where you're reacting and getting angry and frustrated about it. So, yeah, anyways, I hope that that was supportive for you. And if that's something that you'd like further support in. Um, If you're a mom, especially, uh, then let me know and find out more about what we're doing at TechnoTutor because that's pretty crucial to this whole thing, both for Max and for me. Um, Because, yeah, we've got a lot of work to do. And I do and all of us do. So anyways, I'm going to leave that there for tonight because I got to go move them around, but I will see you guys next time.